Well, it's an historic end of an era in Cuba that many thought we would never leave to see. It is the first time in nearly 60 years that a Castro is not leading the country. Miguel Diaz Canal being sworn in as president. You know, the communist island nation is still, however, a safe haven for about 90 fugitives of American justice, including convicted cop killer, the radical Black Liberation Army member Joanne Chesimar, there on the left. She is on the FBI most wanted terrorist list right now. And the guy on the right, Willie Morales, the FALN convicted bomb maker, well, he's seen on the right of the screen. He is on the most wanted domestic terrorist list. The FALN accused of bombing the historic Francis Tavern, where George Washington bid farewell to his troops in New York City back in 1975. That explosion killed four people. One of them was Frank Connor. There's Frank, and our next guest is one of those little boys. Hmm. He is the co-author of this book. Shattered Lives, a book he says is about the impact of terrorism and the perverted political mantle that some have draped over terrorist causes like the FALN with praise and adoration. He is Joseph Connor, who's been campaigning for justice ever since and joins us now. And Joe, it's always a pleasure and an honor to have you. Oh, thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. you have been fighting this for, for decades. Uh, and this book, yeah. this book, uh, which is about about what, what you went through, what yeah. your family went through, and what uh, terrorist victims have gone through. Yeah. Tell me the amazing story how this started. Well, you know, it all started when I was nine years old. We were going to be celebrating my birthday that day when my father was murdered. Finally, I decided I wanted to write about it, and it was actually, exactly two years after the Clintons had released the terrorists that murdered my father. I was getting on the train. The FALN members. The FALN members. I was getting on the train on September 10th, 2001, and I purposely avoided my cousin Steve, who worked for Canna Fitzgerald, because I wanted to start writing about what happened two years before. Well, I didn't see Steve that day, and the next day he was murdered um, as I saw the planes explode at, in the World Trade Center from my office downtown. So that's how it all started. And I started writing about my dad, and I started writing about our family, and I started writing about how the injustice that my father and um, Jim Gazork and Charlie Murray, who was injured that day, and Alex Berger, um, how, what they felt and their families had gone through. And uh, so finally, I met Jeff Ingber, who had written a few books, his family, uh, about his family's experience in the Holocaust. And uh, over the last couple of years, we put this book together, and I'm really proud of it. I think it's very it's do you, great. Do you, it's a magnificent effort. And do you feel, though, that the victims of terrorism, families such as yourself, what you've gone through, uh, every time there's something in the news, I call you, do you feel that your voices are appropriately heard by our yeah. government officials. No. And, and now, you know, what, what's relevant, it's so, so relevant now. I mean, looking at Cuba, and we know William Morales is in Cuba, yet we are not demanding his return. We're not demanding Joanne Chesimar's return, Victor Garena's return, Charlie Hill's return. We need to, before we do anything more with the new regime in Cuba, is to get these guys back. They're terrorists. They've been convicted. And there's no reason why we would deal with a, with a country who harbors terrorists like well, You this. think it was a big mistake by the Obama administration to, to open up dip diplomatic relations? The State Department, we yeah. called. The State Department says, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to work on that. Are yeah. they working on it? Well, it's too late, right? I mean, you don't, negotiation isn't capitulation, two different things. You, you, you don't give away the, the, what you have first and then expect to get something back later. So your, message, the works. your message to President Trump would be what? Would be cut off all relations with Cuba right now get these guys back before we begin any more conversations. We, you just did a story in North Korea. It works. Toughness works. Strength works. And we need to use that leverage against, against Cuba right now to get these terrorists returned. There's a ton of American tourist money, up to billions of dollars, with an $87 billion economy like Cuba, which is tiny. A few billion American tourist dollars is gigantic. We need to use that leverage and get these guys back. And finally, you've also uh, 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 criticized what some consider the a view of a political correctness over some of these terrorist causes. Yeah, you know, I think my father in some ways was killed by the wrong brand of terrorists. He was killed by Marxist leftist terrorists. And in our country, Luis Gutierrez, um, the Clintons who released the, the, the FALN initially, um, Obama who released, uh, who released Oscar Lopez, and then they have a parade where they're calling him a freedom hero last year. This, these people were Marxist terrorists. They never had any intention of freeing the Puerto Rican people. They wanted to enslave them into another country. Well, he hasn't been convicted, so, uh, but in terms of the cause... Well, he was, they were all convicted of being terrorists, maybe not for Francis bombing yeah. specifically, but they were convicted and sentenced up to 90 years. They threatened to kill the judge at sentencing. I mean, these are bad guys.
And when you see this country or some in this country who uh, think this is a freedom movement. Yeah, there was no freedom involved. You know, the, the Puerto Rican people have had plebiscites where last, last year 97 percent voted to become a state. So these people had nothing to hang their hat on. They were terrorists, they were Marxists, and that's what they wanted to enslave the Puerto Rican people. Oh, Joe Connor, I can only think that your father, Frank, would be very proud of you. I hope so. And for the fight. And this is the book. It is called Shattered Lives by uh, Joe Connor.